Yeah, you know, the uh, sort of the official move to FBS football. And uh, I think, you know, redshirting uh, was almost like 15 players last year. Uh, I think has been a big benefit for us. We feel we're a lot deeper football team than we we would have been had we done that. Uh, also, I think we've recruited very well uh, moving to FBS. Obviously, we've always recruited well. We've had pretty good football teams here. But I can even see a jump in the recruiting, you know, since the announcement that we've moved to FBS. So like our roster, I uh, thought we had a really good training camp. Um, you know, excited to, you know, kind of get the whole thing together and, and, and take on the challenge. You know, I've been reminded a number of times we have the 38th ranked schedule in America and, you know, we just need to attack it just kind of one game at a time. You know, for those of you who don't know me at all or, or you know, how I operate, it's all, all about playing BYU. We really have not talked a lot about beyond, you know, playing that BYU game. And in fact, in their player's manual, when we get to the schedule, there's one game in very large letters, and it's BYU. And then we'll figure out who we play next after after that game. So um, put a lot of attention on, on you know, playing opening day. Um, I understand from people who played there, um, you know, great environment. You know, it's going to be a great crowd. Uh, obviously, nationally televised game, you know, all the kind of things that uh, we were looking forward to when we moved to FBS. Um, you know, looking at BYU, I know they struggled last year defensively, uh, made a change at the coordinator spot, uh, bringing a guy who's really experienced uh, into that position. And um, I thought they did a really good job in the transfer portal. Um, they they really, you know, brought in some some high-level guys to help them in the secondary and, and also some defensive linemen that are really good football players. Um, you know, offensively, they lost some guys. Um, you know, it took three transfer offensive linemen, all really good players. Um, you know, I really like the running backs. They brought in some new running backs and, and the quarterback, you know, Slovis is a guy that has had some, you know, outstanding success when, when he was at USC and then sort of, you know, was kind of, you know, up and down a little bit at Pitt. So I think they're hoping to get the, the Slovis that played at, uh, at, uh, USC, and uh, all indications is that uh, they feel pretty good about the, uh, um, you know, spring that he's had and also the fall camp he's had. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, we're excited to, to get this thing started. And, uh, again, I like my football team, and we're going to go, um, you know, battle and, and just kind of take it one snap at a time. So, questions? All right, we'll go ahead and go to questions. We'll start with Tyler. Yeah, Coach, um, you talked about all the transfers they have coming in. How, how difficult is a week one opponent when there's so many unknowns, not a lot of tape, and you got a guy like uh, Slovis where you might not know what to expect out, out of their quarterback play and trying to defend yeah, that? Welcome to, welcome to college football. Um, you know, it's just changed so much with, with the transfer portal and all the movement that now, now takes place. It's almost like a common theme now. I think almost every uh, team that you play opening day is going to have a lot of moving parts. Um, you know, they might have a couple more than most because they, they really weren't satisfied with the season they had, even though they were a bowl team. I believe they won that bowl game. Um, you know, I think they felt they needed to to do some upgrading. And, and uh, you know, it looks like uh, on paper um, and just watching a little bit of their spring game and, and just watching the clips that come out via Twitter and those things, it, you know, sounds like they've they feel pretty good about the team they have going forward. So. Um, yeah, I mean, opening days are always a little mysterious. You know, we have a new offensive coordinator. Um, so, you know, I'm sure they're looking over Virginia Tech tape and they're looking at Memphis tape and doing all those kind of things. Um, just like we're looking at, uh, you know, um, former FCS tape, you know, we're looking at FCS tape from where the defensive coordinator came from. So, again, um, you know, it's going to be a great challenge. And there are going to be some some things that are going to surprise you that you maybe didn't realize the caliber of player they got or maybe some different schemes based on the players they got. So, you know, opening day is always a mystery. All right, Carlos. Hey, Coach Kaler. So it's been a little bit since you and I talked, but uh, whenever you and I had talked at that last practice, we talked quite a bit about the quarterback battle between Keegan Shoemaker and Grant. Just uh, talk to me about a little bit of how that progression has been now that we're about four days out from the ballgame. Yeah, they're both. They're still both sharing reps. 
Um, we're sort of narrowed down to all ones and twos now. We don't get the the threes, you know, many reps anymore. But um, you know, it's they're making each other better. And the great thing about Keegan Shoemaker, who's just voted captain, um, you know, he came to me like when we brought Grant in because he knew Grant, and he said, "I get it. I'm gonna sing for my supper." Uh, and I love that about Keegan Shoemaker. You know, he gets it. It's all about competition. And I really think he's had a phenomenal um, training camp. And I think a lot of it's because, you know, Grant's been right there, you know, pushing him every step of the way. So, you know, we feel we have two quarterbacks we can play. I, I, my intent is not to play two quarterbacks. My intent to, is to play one. But the nice thing is, is that if one's struggling or if we, you know, has to go down, you know, he goes down or has an, an you know something that uh, an injury or whatever. We feel like we can put a second guy out there that can execute the offense at a pretty high level. Colton, um, coach, the offensive line it's not necessarily rebuilt, but kind of reloaded from guys that played different positions last year. What have you kind of seen? You know, as they go back to their normal roles this year. Well, then we added a couple of Tyler J.C. kids on the left side uh, who've played really well for us. I mean, Grayson and and uh, Mark Hendrick have really, you know, solidified that left side of the offensive line. Um, you know, Ethan Hagler, captain, you know, he'll end up being one of the best centers I've ever coached. Uh, just a really good football player. Uh, James Dons had a great camp, um, really has improved dramatically. He was really, you know, challenged. Uh, to do some things this off season to give himself some more flexibility and be able to bend a little bit better. And he's done that. And he's really played well. And um, then Diari, I mean, here's a guy who started for us as a true freshman in the national championship run. And then, um, you know, ends up playing center for us last year, which still gives us a lot of variables in terms of moving guys around. So I feel good about our starting five. I really do. Um, I think, uh, you know, we'll be a little undersized for what a typical FBS program looks like. Um, but, um, you know, I think it's a, a, a good group that has some athleticism and, you know, they will battle. Um, so I, I think I think we did a good job putting a, putting together an offensive line. All right, Benjamin. Hey, Coach, good to see you. Uh, a lot of talk about the defensive front seven and for good reason, but with the secondary, we saw a lot of guys grow up last year, Fisher, Weaver, Atkins. What have you seen from those guys and then also some of the transfers that you brought in in veterans? Yeah, no question. Um, you know, the the benefit of us redshirting guys last year where a lot of guys got pushed into the fray and said, hey, you know, let's see how you do. So it's a combination of us having developed a lot of depth because guys have had to play and then also getting some guys back like an Isaiah Downs. You know, he he comes back uh, 100% uh, after playing four games last year. Uh, so, yeah, I like I like where we are in the secondary. I think we have some depth. I think we can go play four corners. I think we have three or four safeties that can play. I got three cats that can play, which is our nickel position. Um, so I think that um, maybe was a position of, you know, some question marks. And I think we feel pretty good going into game one that we have some depth there. And, um, you know, it's not maybe as loaded the, as a linebacker room is, but I think we feel pretty good where we are in the secondary. All right, Ben Peck. Hey, Coach, uh, just curious. You know, I, I know it's nothing new for you guys to open up against, you know, division one or FBS or, you know, big time power five curious if this feels uh, any different with the players or, you know, given that experience, if it, as far as week one setup doesn't really feel too much different than normal. No, I mean, we played A&M last year to open up the season. And then, uh, you know, when I first got here, you know, a couple games in, we had LSU. So we have played, you know, some big time venues against some big time programs in the past. Um, it is a little different that you feel that, okay, now you, you have a little bit more depth. You have 85 scholarships. We're not nearly as deep in the secondary if we don't have those 85 scholarships. Uh, we're not nearly as deep at the linebacker spot unless you have those 85 scholarships. So um, uh, again, I think we just feel like we're a just a little bit deeper football team. Um, but, um, and I think our talent level is, is really good but it's only maybe slightly better than what we had at the FCS level when we won the national championship. Again, you know, most teams that win FCS national championships can play head to head with a lot of, a lot of FBS programs. So um, yeah, I, I think the, the move to FBS has definitely given us a sense where we're a deeper team. 
Um, and that shows in a couple positions, you know, the secondary uh, and linebacker, for sure, we're a lot deeper football team than we would have been at the FCS level. All right, let's come back to Carlos. Coach, I think uh, one aspect of the game that we haven't really talked about is special teams. You lost an All-American kicker in Seth Morgan to the transfer portal, but you bring back Jaden Cardell as a stellar punter at that. Just talk about the uh, special teams and how that has been progressing throughout training camp and leading up to this game. Yeah, we're having we're having battles at the the snapper position where we have a returner coming back. Uh, we're having battles at the kicker position, you know, where we have a guy who's played some for us in the past. Um, you know, Jaden's probably the, the the one guy that it's like, okay, you know, we have a punter, um, and and we're going with him. But uh, there's battles at at all the other positions. Um, so uh, and those are going to be kind of game day decisions. We're going to take you know two kickers with us. We're going to take two snappers with us. Um, and um, and kind of figure out by game time who's going to be doing, you know, how are we going to share the duties? Is one guy kicking off and one guy kicking extra points and field goals? Um, you know, is one guy going to do the short snap and one guy do the long snapping? We're still in the, in the process of figuring all that stuff out. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we I think we can put some pretty good specialists out there, you know, so uh, we feel pretty good about that. Um, you know, still trying to figure out who the returners are. Um, you know, Zach Abacek is a guy that you would love to have back as your punt returner. And then you love to have him back as your kick returner. And then you love to have him as your starting tailback. So we got to figure out like, you know, how many snaps we can actually get Zach, but he's a guy who can just fill so many, many, you know, needs for us. So, uh, but you know, in our talk about beating BYU, it's a lot of been about like, you know, we got to play clean. We got to win on special teams. You know, so, you know, that's going to be really key for us. If we don't win on special teams, I don't think we can win this football game. we got to win on special teams. And that, uh, that's been a major emphasis for us. Colton. Colton, you got a question? Yeah, sorry, I think I'm frozen. I got you. Um, you know, last last season, y'all redshirted a lot of guys. Has there been any, been any limitations getting them back on the field, you know, ready for this week one game? No, not at all. I mean, we pretty much – I'd say that, you know, a couple guys were um, – like Jaden Phillips was a guy who was okay. Like the first two weeks, we're going to limit his contact, but then he's clear after that. But almost everyone else – um, either was redshirted because we wanted to redshirt them or we we decided like, listen, let's get this surgery done early. That way we can get them back a hundred percent for, for next season. And, uh, you know, Trevor Williams and Markel Perry and all those guys have been out there. Javon Leon, you know, going a hundred percent pretty much, uh, since the first day of training camp. So, um, and again, you know, if you look at our roster, I know it was brutal last year, you know, I mean, we had this great sand play for the, for the, you know, um, play for the standard, but it was hard. It was hard watching all these really good players not be out there playing football for us. But now that we've gone through that, I think we all feel really good that we have, you know, those guys back, part of the fold, get a chance to, you know, create a lot more depth and uh, give us a, a football team that can go out and compete um, day in and day out. Tyler. Yeah, Coach, how much of a measuring stick is this game that, you know, week one in a hostile environment gets the Power 5 team to say, hey, you know, we prove to ourselves we do belong uh, as an FBS team? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, our kids, um, first of all, <laughs> teams that I coach will never lack any confidence. Um, and I think they're excited to go see, like, where they measure up. Uh, we, we know it's an outstanding opponent. Uh, we know the players they've added. Uh, again, we know going on the road is hard. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's why, that's, that's why you take nine months to prepare for three months of a football season, because it's just this amazing three months of your life that you just put everything into. And you want to see at the end of that three months, you know, how well did we do, you know, could we be a bowl team? You know, that's the goal of, uh, you know, first we want to beat BYU, but you know, we do have some goals. We want to win conference USA, which we can win the regular season of conference USA. We can go to a bowl. There are some things that have to happen for us for that to happen, but we can go to a bowl. So those are all the things. And so it all starts with game one. You know, let's uh, let's go see uh, where we stand right now. And and um, I think the kids are excited. 
Benjamin? Yeah, Coach, first year going into a full FBS schedule, has the way you approach the offseason practices recruiting changed at all now that you're at the FBS level? Well, yeah, we're, we're conscious of, you know, the fact that we have some short weeks. Uh, we're conscious of the fact that we have a bunch of midweek games. Um, so, you know, we're – we're going to make some adjustments as we go along. You know, I, I have some guys on my staff that you know, we're in the NFL and, um, you know, talking to them about, you know, those turnarounds from those Sunday games, those Thursday games and, and, and what sort of things, you know, they had to do. And, um, you know, I think you'll see us, you know, probably take the pads off a little bit more than we would during the course of a regular season because, you know, we have some condensed weeks and, and some, some, some things like that. But, uh, uh, I think the preparation for the most part is going to be very similar to what we've been doing. You know, I think we have a really good culture here. And I, I think our, our players really like the style in which we play and the way we practice. Um, you know, we had a big weight workout the last two days. You know, we're getting the guys in there after practice and we're hitting the weights hard. Um, you know, just, you know, uh, Monday the guys were in on their off day, you know, a bunch of them getting a, a yoga class in, you know, just to work uh, out the kinks, you know. So uh, we have a pretty good culture here. And I think uh, – you know, we're just going to let that culture take over and, and go kind of move into FBS with that culture. All right, Colton. Um, just, you know, a lot of road games this year, you know, not a true home game until uh, September 28th. What would it kind of be like to get that first kind of long road trip out of the way and, and get that team? Do you think, like, it'll be good for team building or anything like that? Yeah, I, I think, you know, there's so many things that you do, you know, to, to build a team. I think going on the road is one of the best things to do to build, a, you know, team chemistry and, and that camaraderie. And and, and um, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of times I like having a, a big road game, you know, to start off a season because, um, again, you know, you're in the on the bus, you're in the plane, you're in the hotel, you know, just so many things you go through together in the course of a road trip that, you know, even brings you closer together. And we do a lot of things in our culture where we have a lot of situations where we have crossover. In other words, the offensive line coach is doing things with our defensive backs or our kickers or, you know, our running back coach is doing stuff with the D line or the, the linebackers. I mean, we do a lot of crossover things. And so, you know, all the coaches and all the players really, you know, have a relationship. You know, we always say, you know, you can't trust somebody unless you know somebody. You can't love somebody unless you know somebody. And, you know, two of our main foundations of our culture is love and trust. And so, you know, this is just another way for us to, you know, kind of keep on growing the culture and keep on growing the relationships uh, that we have with uh, with our players.